This video is sponsored by Incogni. Apple finally had its big artificial intelligence moment, and while everyone was busy discussing their new features and their supposed privacy claims, the most revolutionary part of Apple's strategy was actually something that got almost completely lost in the conversation, something called App Intense. App Intense underpin basically all of Apple's unique new AI capabilities, and they form a system that other AI companies will have an extremely hard time matching. Unsurprisingly, Apple's documentation for developers around the show was full of write-ups and tutorials around App Intense, but consumers barely seem to have noticed any of the big announcements. So in this video, let's take a look at the state of personal AI right now, how Apple is taking basically the opposite approach from everyone else with their App Intense, and whether this system might or might not work. Consumer-facing AI systems today roughly fall into two distinct categories. The old guard, like Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant, are personal assistants that were specifically made for very simple commands like telling you the weather, setting timers, etc. But as Satya Nadella pointed out, they were dumb as a rock, as all they could do was follow pre-programmed commands for very simple tasks. Meanwhile, the new large language models like ChatGPT know a ton of things about the world due to being trained on huge chunks of the internet, but they have so far been disconnected from users' personal context with no way of completing tasks on the user's behalf. The next step that everyone is rushing towards is clearly a product that can bridge this gap. An assistant that is as conversational and smart as ChatGPT, but also as capable of, for example, turning on your smart lights as Siri. Well, ideally more capable than the current Siri, I guess, because that one, in my experience, is not very good, but you get the point. Everyone from Microsoft to Google, Humane, Rabbit, and now also Apple have said that they're working on some version of this. And in the end, the ideal assistant should be able to execute the command like this. Hey assistant, my mom is visiting. Order the pizza that she said that she likes from DoorDash, deliver it to my place, and pay with my PayPal. That is a complex, personal, multi-step command where the assistant would have to know who your mom is, it would have to find in your messages what pizza she told you that she likes, it would somehow have to know your address, your payment information, etc. And for this to be possible, there are two major breakthroughs that have to happen. First, the assistant needs to be highly intelligent and flexible, and second, it needs unprecedented amounts of access. Access to pull information about you at all times from all of your sources, and access to push commands through deep integrations with third-party service providers like DoorDash and PayPal in this example. And part one, the intelligence, is what basically every other company that has focused on so far, because that's where these new large language models like ChatGPT and Gemini have brought the biggest change so far. For an extreme example, take Rabbit. As a brand new startup, they obviously had no data about you and no app ecosystem to rely on for access. But they claimed that they developed an AI that was so smart that it would kind of just fix the access problem. They called it the large action model and said that their AI learned how to open websites like DoorDash on your behalf and would just click through the website like a human to dynamically figure out how to translate your spoken commands into action like a specific food delivery order. Order. Now, of course, we now know that most of these claims from Revit were at least partially fake and the system doesn't really work well. But this is the purest form of the first kind of approach. They go all in on intelligence and are hoping that that will lead them to access. They're basically brute forcing access. And if you think about it, a lot of the systems that we've seen from, I don't know, Microsoft and Google, for example, have quite a lot of this approach in them as well. Remember Recall, the new feature where Windows will take screenshots every few seconds on future PCs and tries to analyze what is in them using machine learning models? Well, this is a way of Microsoft brute forcing access to what the user is doing in third-party apps without having to rely on the app makers to tell the operating system directly. And maybe to a lesser degree, but Google does this too. The company's most successful new AI feature, by far, is Circle to Search. Once again, a feature that is basically relying on screenshots being taken and sent to Google so they can tell you what you're looking at. In a way, this is Google giving itself access to stuff across your phone without the need for an app developer to build some kind of an integration. Now, these three examples are far from equivalent, but they all show a company that is trying to basically hack its way into access and then hoping that intelligence will take them from there. And meanwhile, Apple is making basically the exact opposite bet. Apple, as far as I can tell, has not made any claims about their AI being smarter than the rest. 
They didn't mention parameters or context windows, and most of the features that they've shown, which will come to iPhones in the future, have already shipped on their competing devices many months ago. Instead, Apple is making the bet that their superpower will be unprecedented access. Like Google and Microsoft, they obviously also have a massive first-party ecosystem, which forms the basis for personal context, but then App Intense, for the first time ever, might also give their AI unprecedented direct access to and control over third-party services. App Intent is a system that was first introduced in 2021, and it was originally meant to power Shortcuts. Shortcuts is an app that lets a user build automations across the various different apps that they have installed on their device. So, for example, a user can set up that if they open the Kindle app, the screen brightness should automatically go down, Do Not Disturb mode should be activated, and Music Playback, for example, should be stopped. Stuff like that. A user can change together commands like these across the OS and apps. And for these automations to work, the third-party apps of course have to expose all of their key functionality to the operating system. And this is what app intents are, a system that lets a developer label actions, objects, content, entities, etc. in their app in a standardized way so that the operating system can understand them and interact with them. Say you have a hiking app on iOS, for example. All the hiking trails would be some of your objects, and the option to start a hike would be an action. And using App Intense, these options and actions could just show up inside shortcuts. So that's the basic idea. App Intents allow an app maker to expose their app to the operating system. And over time, and especially with this year's WWDC, Apple has extended App Intents a lot. App Intents will now be featured in a Spotlight Search, the system-wide search feature. Actions from inside apps can already show up here, but starting with iOS 18, an app developer can also declare any content inside their app as indexable. So for example, in our hiking app, we could declare the text fields that describe our trails as indexable and the operating system could then read, remember, and bring those up as search results in Spotlight. Beside that, actions are also highlighted in a lot more places now too. The action button on the newer iPhones can of course be programmed to trigger a specific action using App Intense, so can the squeeze gesture on the new iPad Pencil, and at WWDC, Apple also announced the ability to bring actions to the control center. App Intense also support status updates, so they're increasingly powering widgets across the operating system too, plus of course, the really big news is that they will also be the system powering the new Siri and Apple intelligence. That's right, Apple's AI can pull data from and push commands to any participating third-party app all through the magic of App Intents. It is one system that is powering all of this, and if you think about it, this creates access like we've never seen before. Because App Intents power so many useful services at once, developers are highly incentivized to use them. And because the whole system relies on your existing apps, both developers and users barely need to do any work for it to work. Say you want the pizza delivered, you probably already have an iOS app installed for that, and that app already knows your delivery location, it has your payment information, and it of course also knows how to place an order. I find that very elegant in an extremely Apple way. Their whole superpower is that developers love making apps for their platforms and love adopting all of these new system-wide features, and that is exactly what they're leaning on. Okay, and while I think that is impressive and unique, there's also three more things that I'd like to point out in addition. First, Android does have some systems that are not completely dissimilar from App Intense. You can see this in action when you long press an app icon on the home screen and you get this kind of quick action for that app, and those quick actions also typically show up in system search. And actually, Samsung's Bixby Assistant also has the closest equivalent to Apple's shortcut system in the form of routines. Bixby routines allow the user to chain together commands, just like shortcuts, and they even include a few third-party apps like Spotify, which has even exposed some of their app data like playlists. So clearly it is not impossible to build a system like this on Android eventually, but right now the system on Android is nowhere near as advanced as it is on iOS. Second, while a ton of apps, especially on iOS, have embraced App Intense already, this whole system still requires opt-in from developers. Will WhatsApp and Signal expose the contents of their messages to iOS? I doubt it, because that would be a pretty questionable security policy. And similarly, many developers are actively fighting Apple, so they might not want to embrace a system just out of spite. Being opt-in means that Apple might end up with a system that maybe only half works. Only time can tell. And third, there is no guarantee that Apple's AI will in fact be smart enough to do anything useful with all of this access. 
Apple of course now claims that their new AI will be super smart, but outsiders have not been able to verify this yet. Their past performance with Siri does not imply that the company is particularly good at building personal assistants, and every other tech company that has promised big AI things on stage has ended up with mountains of problems once their products launched. Microsoft had to recall recall their headlining AI feature before it even launched. Google got into trouble for generating racially diverse Nazis and instructing people to put glue on their pizzas. Rabbit and Humane were such dumpster fires that I think the companies will never make it to a second generation product. And Amazon proudly announced already over a year ago that Alexa would be running on top of a large language model by now, but then reportedly they just couldn't make it actually work yet. The challenge is that large language models are by definition not deterministic, so they will not give you the same answer for the same input. They're a little bit random. Do we want a super smart but also slightly unreliable AI controlling our smart home devices and setting our timers or whatever? Maybe. Maybe this can be done extremely well, but until I see a company actually doing it well, which hasn't happened yet, yeah, I think I'll remain slightly skeptical. All right, now a final worry for me with all of these new AI tools is of course also privacy. Apple has made big claims here, which we might be able to verify one day, but what we already do know is that large piles of user data often end up either intentionally being used for shady things or they just end up accidentally leaking, after which they often end up feeding some online shadow profile of you compiled by a hungry data broker that you've never even heard of. This is so common by now that your friendly neighborhood government agency has likely decided that it's often easier for them to just buy data online than to do their own spying. And of course, scammers are now using data like this to personalize scams to you to the point where studies are now showing that digitally savvy people are more likely to fall for scams than others because they're often hyper online and can be targeted better. Cool. But actually, if you hate all of that, then check out my sponsor, Incogni. Incogni is a tool that helps to remove your data from these shady data brokers, and it has already successfully removed me from 56 of these. 56 data brokers, goddammit. The way it works is that in many countries, you can request your data to be deleted, and there are actual laws that require companies to comply. But here's the problem. How do you know who has all of your data? How do you contact all of those companies? And how do you make sure that they don't just create a new profile about you right after they deleted your old one? Well, you do that with Incogni's Information Removal Service, which actually does the job of automatically reaching out to data brokers on your behalf to request removal of your personal data based on laws in applicable markets, and it deals with any objections from their side. Incogni continually keeps doing this to stop you from re-entering their database right after, hence why this is a subscription, and for you the process is automatic and you get feedback on your status. Now note that this only necessarily works in these places because data laws in other jurisdictions might be lacking, but that's a pretty good selection already. And to sign up, be sure to use my code TechAltar to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. That is incogni.com slash techaltar for 60% off, and I'll see you in the next video.